hearts and souls I've got to make you bitter The days are long But when your politics are literature Hello everybody and welcome to another one of these things. I hope you're all well. I was not expecting to be doing one of these so soon. I thought for sure I would be in my new studio doing the new episode, but not the case. Uh, before I was able to even put everything away, I got an email from the folks at Dehancer with a sort of time sensitive uh, message they wanted me to get out to my viewers, uh, which there aren't too many. Hopefully that'll grow. Uh, but. They wanted me to uh, communicate some information and uh, also do this review on Dehancer Pro 6. Dehancer Pro 6 uh, is the current stable version of the film emulation software that they are becoming quite famous for. They're a direct competitor to products like uh, Film Convert, which you have like a lot of uh, big studios that have used, but there are some notable YouTubers that have been jumping on the Dehance thing, like uh, Brandon Lee, uh, uh, Tom Domini, whose stuff I really um, admire, uh, his, his reviews on software. I bought all the Topaz stuff because of him, <laughs> and which is enhancing software rather than dehancing software. Uh, and um, Victor La Forteza, who's, um, uh, if you haven't checked out his stuff, it's got this really cool vintage look to it, and I was kind of wondering how he was getting that. Turns out that he's got Dehancer in the mix, that's what's helping him out. Uh, anyway, so that's a little bit about what Dehancer is. Now, the reason that this review is sort of time sensitive, now, those of you who've been here before know I don't really do reviews, I'm not a reviewer, but I will. But I'll do my best uh, to review the software. So the reason this is time sensitive is I only had a short period of time that the software they gave me would be active, that I would be able to test the software with and then do the review. So that's uh, sort of one deadline. And then the other one is that the Dehancer people wanted me to communicate to all of you that uh, Dehancer will be increasing in price starting January the 10th. It's going to go from $399 US to $449 US. So there will be a, a small uh, price increase. Uh, if you'd like to jump on to buying Dehancer, if you're interested at all after uh, watching this, um, uh, you probably want to do that before the 10th. And um, if you want to save another 10%, you can use the discount code here or in the description below. It's uh, my own uh, discount code that the Dehancer people have provided me to give all of you. Uh, so you can get an additional 10% off. And of course, I get a little something out of that too to help grow the channel. And it is much appreciated. If you decide to buy, please uh, save yourself 10% and help me out at the same time. <laughs> Anyway, I've never done anything like this before, so it's kind of cool, and uh, it's really neat uh, to have uh, a company like um, the Dehancer people to uh, take interest in the channel, and um, I will not let that affect um, this review or um, any of the opinions I have of this software. For those of you who haven't been here before, I had a completely different intro at the beginning of the show, but that little thing with the camera at the beginning, uh, that was uh, an animation that I did. I'm actually a 3D animator uh, in in the real world. <laughs> and uh, I did that, that little intro in um, 3D and Blender. 
And I actually, uh, and I rendered that in, of course, Rec. 709, and then put that through Dehancer to give that a film look. And I thought it'd be kind of uh, cool to actually use a uh, Konica Minolta uh, film stock because it was a Minolta in the shot. So that, so that's what I used. And as far as the print film, like, well, I mean, it's it's photo, it's photographic film anyway, so it would be going to paper. But rather than add anything to it afterwards. I just left it the way it is. <clears throat> I'll explain that later when we go into the software. Um, you know, some of the differences between uh, the actual acquisition film, like the film that you shoot something on, and then what print film is. Um, so, and then the skateboard stuff, um, I did all of that with um, Dehancer 6 Pro. And the, the the intro was actually done with the Hanser 7 Beta, the Hanser Pro 7 Beta. Now, the reason I didn't do anything more with the Hanser Pro 7 was the Beta is absolutely unstable. <laughs> it just, it was crashing, it was crashing my system constantly. I hardly was able to get through that, that intro uh, because it, it just kept, I kept having to save every five minutes um, because it would it would just crash on me and, and I couldn't get further ahead any other way and I'm sure um, I mean it's a beta I'm not expecting it to be rock solid but it also could have something to do with my own system it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that should reflect badly on the Dehancer uh, team but uh, but the actual stable you know, proper release version six is completely fine. Only crashed on me once, <laughs> but I did put it through its paces to make it crash. So uh, I'm not going to really hold that against them either, because I I have had you know plugins crash uh, when I pushed them to their limit, and I I tend to do that when I'm trying software out. Uh, but um, Dehancer 6 Pro, uh, what you can get now, the retail version um, uh, for OFX at least is is um, is pretty solid anyway um, let us move over to the desktop I will show you how I took care of those skateboard clips which I thought were pretty nice actually the nice thing about um, this software is that that was a bit heavy-handed probably like I mean you can really see the grain in in in, in that footage and uh, the nice thing about this software is you can go as heavy as you want or as subtle as you want. So it's, it's all within your uh, control. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how things like grain are handled differently in Dehancer than maybe some other uh, software. And um, anyway, before I blab on, let's get to the desktop. Hey there, and welcome to the webcam view. I had originally intended that this channel be a tutorial channel. Clearly that never materialized. Uh, anyway, let's hop into Dehancer and I'll show you what Dehancing is all about. Whoa, who's that scary looking guy? I'm clearly editing all this in order. I'm gonna drag a clip here to use as an example. Now, if you're wondering where I'm dragging these in from, um, I've got another monitor going here beside me. I'm going to keep everything relegated to the one monitor so I don't have the entire interface up. That's going to make things a lot easier for you all to see uh, without everything jammed onto one screen. I'm going to unlink these clips so I can kill the audio. Um, this is uh, David here getting ready to rail slide. Thank you for helping out, David. I'm going to jump over to the color page now. And so how I'd normally do this is I would add a node uh, that I would do all my adjustments on. I'm shooting this in S-Log3 Cine. Uh, and of course, when you're shooting in S-Log, you want to do all your you know exposure changes and things like that uh, prior to your color space transform. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless shooting in log you know, to basically recover anything that you have to and so on. And then after that, I would add a sharpen usually because I've got my um, FX30 set up, so uh, I haven't got any in-camera sharpening going on. I never uh, use more than uh, 0.47 here in the radius for my sharpening, so I've got, I've got the sharpening applied there. Uh, and then after that, I would add my color space transform. And then once that was on, 
I would go back here and then do my adjustments about the color space transform. Now, the Hanser has color space transforms built into it. You can either use theirs or use your own. If you're going to use Dehancer, I would recommend using theirs because theirs are designed to work with the rest of the changes that you're going to be making. Let's uh, throw Dehancer on here and drag it in. And so the way it starts us off is with the Rec 709. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to choose the camera as the source and then the vendor will be Sony of course and then the camera. Now this is going to be my first sort of uh, criticism. So Dehancer, I hope you're listening. Uh, when I go to CinemaLine FX3, which is the closest thing I can find here color wise, it would be nice to have one that says FX30. Um, the problem um, comes uh, when we go to this next part where the closest thing I can find is S-Log um, Gamut 3 Cine. Now, I'm going to choose that, but the problem is that the base ISO on the FX30 when you're shooting in S-Log 3 is actually 800. So um, this doesn't really apply uh, properly, I guess, to the FX30. The answer, um, include the FX30 in the in the profiles and, and I'm sure you'll be including um, all kinds of new cameras as they come out. I would be a little bit leery maybe about uh, making these exposure changes here and I would just do them in my node here. Uh, you never know, um, Dehancer may be smart enough to take into account um, that you're shooting in log and you know in the background it may be doing these uh, changes before anything else i don't i don't know but but just to be safe i'm I, I would keep my changes here the next thing here would be to choose our actual film profile i'm going to change this to vision uh, 3500t a uh, very popular film stock in hollywood uh, what these numbers mean if you're curious 500 is actually the speed of the film and this letter afterwards the t means tungsten balanced or balance for uh, indoors, which is fine even if you're uh, using it for something that's that was shot outside. Uh, normally the uh, higher speed films are uh, tungsten because you'd be requiring a higher speed film uh, indoors, but you also need a higher speed film for things like sports and whatever. Um, the uh, ones with the lower ISO, which is essentially what this number is, um, would be the ones you're using outside and those would be followed by a D for daylight rather than T for tungsten. Here you've got the control to push and pull which is pretty cool because that sort of mimics the the process that you'd use in a traditional film environment. Uh, moving on uh, this is another uh, the same sort of thing where you can um, uh, change things in the developing process when you're developing actual film and uh, make any changes there. Um, uh, compression and expansion, these actually go a long way to emulate film um, because film normally, uh, you know, retains um, highlights uh, and and things in the, in the shadow um, quite well and you're able to actually push film quite hard before you're losing highlights. You can compress things that are in the mid-tones and while you're still maintaining stuff at the top and, and the bottom of your image. Here's a quick explanation of print. Now, the first film that we chose is our acquisition film, which is the you know cellulose that we're actually shooting with, the film that's actually in the camera. And this second one is uh, usually the film that uh, for the purposes of distribution or, uh, or even for the look, people who are still working with film would uh, put it to a print stock and then they would digitize it afterwards. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose Fuji. 5313, another very popular one in Hollywood, which is, you can see, giving us a really cool look right off the bat. I'm going to wheel down a little bit here. Uh, color head is again something that mimics the 
film process and that's where you can do some analog color correction to your footage if you're seeing things shift one way or another uh, you can combat that by messing with a lot of these uh, film grain very important part of the way film looks clearly now my issues with this were the presets that are available in version 7. The answer if you're going to include a 400 ISO film, you're going to want a preset for 400 ISO grain as well. And uh, per, you know perhaps they're still going to add that. Uh, like I said, um, I was only using a beta, so I'm sure things, uh, things will change. You, we do have a lot of control here over the grain and uh, something that I was using quite a bit when I was working on this skateboard stuff was playing around with the amount. Uh, you can't go smaller than one for size, but for the amount you can do quite a bit. I think I was using like a two or five or something for the amount. Um, just throw in a two. And then you can uh, of course control in here uh, how much the grain is evident in you know the shadows, midtones, and highlights and, and how much it affects the chroma. Uh, what have you. Now about film grain, I was going to mention how uh, Dehancer handles film grain differently than uh, some other ways of adding film grain. Clearly this is much better than just adding an overlay um, because Dehancer is actually analyzing the image underneath rather than just dumping grain on top. And of course the, uh, the grain is animated as well and you've got all this control over the amount of grain in given parts of your image. So um, there are definite advantages to using this to add film grain over other methods. Halation. Uh, that's, you know, where you get a little bit of that warm, um, the warm edges around um, bright areas in your image, which can, of course, contribute to um, the film look. So Bloom, some people may find this a little bit cheesy. Personally, I uh, think it's nice sometimes, uh, depending on the uh, situation, but uh, you know, it does sort of give a sort of dream sequence look to things if you use it a little bit too heavy-handedly. Vignette. This is something I actually use quite a bit. I used it on that little intro segment with the camera. Uh, now thinking about it, it might have looked cool using it on the, uh, the skateboard clips as well. I uh, did not though. Film breadth. Now, uh, this is a, the pulsing that you'll see in film uh, traditionally. I'm going to leave that turned off. So gate weave, this is sort of the wobble that happens as the film is moving, getting pulled through by the teeth. This is something you want to use very gingerly. It's kind of like uh, bloom. You don't want to go too heavy handed with this. If you're going to use it, me, I don't think I'd use it at all really unless it was a very specific situation and uh, you know I wanted this effect. Moving on, so uh, these are just monitoring tools. Um, I'm watching a lot of this stuff prior to even getting to this stage, so um, I, I'm not really concerned about this stuff. Total impact, this is really nice to have because uh, like I was saying, one of the advantages of using something like Dehancer is the fact that you can go as um, heavy or subtle as you want with the, with the effect and now once you've you know, done all this to your taste and you've decided I don't want it quite so heavy. You can actually globally control it from this total impact slider, which is really nice to have here at the end. And all of this stuff, you know, you would do in order, just like all good software tools. Uh, there's a, a chronology to the way the tools are laid out. So you would start at the top and work your way to the bottom. And that's exactly how things are set up here. So LUT generator, um, this is really nice too because you can set up a LUT. I don't think it takes into account everything that you're doing here in Dehancer, but you can set up a LUT if there is something that you are going to be repeating in the future and you want to apply it to, uh, to things uh, later. Uh, you could generate a LUT here with that and uh, these are just your quality settings. So I hope that gives you an idea of how Dehancer works. It is really nice to use, very straightforward actually, and it provides a really quick way to get a look without going through too much trouble. So before I forget to do so, and I forget a lot of things, the Dehancer people requested that I mention all the new things coming with Dehancer 7, and um, well, I'll, 
I won't mention those, I'll just put them on the screen right now, but you'll also find this list in the description of the video below uh, in case this goes by too quickly for you. So something I didn't mention before I hopped over to the computer is I'm shooting this with a new lens. I'm shooting it with a 23 millimeter f1.4 from Sigma. The newly released 23 millimeter f1.4. So it's not just a new lens to me, it is a new lens, which never happens on this channel. Uh, there have been reviews on the lens before, so I'm, I'm, uh, I, I am still a little bit late to the party as usual, but I have been enjoying it because it's the closest thing that to um, give me the same look uh, the distance from the camera as well as the background blur as I was getting with my 35mm on full frame. My 35mm f1.8, the Sony lens I was using on my a7C. Uh, about Dehancer, now we all want that more filmic look or most of us at least want a more filmic look to what we're doing and uh, or a more cinematic look. I hate saying cinematic because what goes into a cinematic look is more than just the actual look. Uh, Dehancer definitely does that. It, it brings us, um, you know, closer to that 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 look of film, and uh, I think it's a great tool for uh, professionals as well as people who just don't want to spend as much time grading because you can get a look so quickly, and uh, so it makes for a very powerful tool and a very powerful combination for those who have grading skills to begin with. Right, so I hope you all got something out of this. If so, please leave me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay too. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I do appreciate the support. And uh, if you do subscribe, uh, hit the notifications so you don't miss any of these episodes. And until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. All right, peace.